En question. Président, please be seated. Président, veuillez vous asseoir. Bah. Um, I want to start by asking you uh, something about your first wife. Uh, you told us that you had consummated your marriage and you said that um, at the time she died you didn't know whether she was pregnant or not. Did you ever learn later whether she was pregnant at the time she was killed? The fact that I did not know whether she was pregnant or not, because during the time that we were together, we were not together every day, because sometimes I was allowed to visit her once a month, so I did not know whether she was pregnant. Did you ever learn following her death whether she had been pregnant at that time or did you never never learn that one way or the other? But no, I did not learn anything new. I'd like to ask you now um, about your emotional condition when you were working at the Trapang Tamaw Dam. Can you tell us what your emotional condition was? Were you happy? Were you sad? Were you fearful? What emotions did you feel in that period of your life? But uh, I never feel happy after that. I actually missed my late wife. I missed the times that we were together, although it was for a brief period of time, but it was the happiest time that I had with her as a husband and wife. And focusing now on your time as a worker Question. at the Trapang Tama Dam, at that time, did you believe that you were going to survive the DK period? During the time that I stayed at the Pantamal Dam worksite, I could never imagine that I could survive. Every morning when I opened my eyes, I knew that I lived for another day, and I could not possibly know what would happen the next day. And we kept saying to one another that if we live through the day, we might uh, not survive during the night. And we only looked forward to one day at a time. And was that fear something that you were able to forget to time to, from time to time when you were working? Or was that fear something that was with you on a more or less continual basis? There was never a single day that I felt happy. 
the concern and the worry and the fear stayed with me every time. And what about in your life today? How, how often do you think about, about that period of your life? How many times per month or week or day uh, do you recall it? Repensez-vous à cette période-là. Until the present time, the memory is still vivid in my mind. And when I attend any religious ceremony, that feeling subdues slightly. I try meditation, and without such intervention, the feeling remains with me every day. I want to ask you about something you said about disappearances. You mentioned first that people who failed to meet their work quota a few times would sometimes disappear. But you also mentioned that people who couldn't work because of illness would sometimes disappear. And my question is, did you ever hear the phrase, uh, to keep them is no gain, to kill them is no loss, in reference to either of those groups of people? But Lou. Yes, I heard uh, that phrase. Oui, j'ai entendu cette expression. Who did you hear speak those words? Who used that phrase? L'interprète n'a pas saisi la question. But Pooh Mi Kong. It was the unit chief group who uh, said that. Qui disait cela? And did he say it on just one occasion, or did he Alors, say it on a regular basis? Seulement une seule fois, ponctuellement, ou le disait-il régulièrement? Demande le coprocureur. Every time when there were more sick workers. He said that phrase. And do you recall where it was that you heard him say that? Was it in your sleeping quarters, at the work site, at a meeting? Um, where, where were you physically when you heard him say that? But no calling to car. I heard him saying that at the work site. Je l'ai entendu dire cela sur le site de travail. I think you mentioned criticism and self-criticism meetings. Vous avez évoqué um, les could you tell us a little bit more about that? Oui, Who was in charge of them? Who ran them? Who spoke? What did they say? Quand For criticism and self-criticism uh, meetings, it was the Lors unit chief who uh, called us to the meeting. For instance, uh, in a group of 10 workers, and if we could not complete the work quota that day, we as a group would be called uh, to attend such a meeting, and we were criticized for being not self-mastery, and that we had to strive harder to be more active. And they warned us that if you keep doing that, then you should be mindful of the Ankara's phrase that is to keep is no gain and to kill is no loss. And upon hearing that, we were so afraid.
Did you ever hear anyone talking about uh, enemies of Ankar or enemies of the revolution when you were at the Trapping Tmaw Dam work site? Answer. Regarding enemies, for instance, Earth of carrying, carrying a basket and holes has to be kept in good place. If one basket was lost, one individual would be accused of being an enemy. The same applies to the hole. If a wee broke the hole, si on cassait la houe, c'était la même chose. And can you tell us who was keeping track of all of these things? Of your, whether you achieved the work quota, whether equipment was lost, whether equipment was broken, who was monitoring that? Qui surveillait? Bạn mẹ thì mẹ con đang ấy, kỷ niệm đời mưu. Answer. It was the unit chief chef who checked the equipment, and uh, the unit qui chief would go around and uh, monitor the tools, whether the il basket were broken, si y avait des the cassés, holes were uh, broken. Ou des ou the unit chief who would go around and check. And what about investigation into people's backgrounds, into who they had been and what they had done before the DK regime? Were you ever aware of any sort of investigation into those matters being carried out? Answer, no. no. Were you ever aware of any uh, district militiamen being present at the si dam work site? Answer, I have never seen them. Je I don't know about that. Je did you ever learn about any workers attempting to escape from the work site? Avez-vous eu connaissance de travailleurs qui ont cherché à s'enfuir du chantier? Answer: I do not know about that. Je n'en sais rien. And what about? Uh, beatings or any other form of physical violence? Did you ever witness any physical violence or beating at the work site? Did you ever witness any violence on the work site? But when they come in, answer no. No. Now, was your work, uh, were you primarily involved in digging earth? Or carrying earth, or did you do both? Surtout de creuser le sol ou de transporter de la terre ou les deux. Matt, can you give me an answer? I was the one who carried the dirt. Je transportais de la terre. Question. And are you able to estimate for us how far it was from the place where the earth was dug to the place where you had to deposit it? Creuser et l'endroit où il fallait déposer la terre. But answer Réponse. regarding uh, the segment at bridge number one, I heard uh, the one. unit chief uh, say about the distance. It was about uh, 100 meters from the middle of the road to bridge number one. De la route pont numéro one. And uh, when the, we dump the dirt and make uh, the 
dam from time to time the height of the dam uh, was getting higher and higher so uh, we had to work hard and to uh, use our strength to move up on the dam and dump the earth and do you have any way of estimating how much each load of earth that you carried would weigh But Answer, I could not give the estimate Je of the weight. I just want to ask you quickly about your working hours. Uh, you discussed that a little bit before, but can you give us an idea of the time you started, the time you stopped for lunch, the time you began after lunch, the time you stopped in the evening, and then the, the, the shift you worked at night, just to the extent you're able to know. Answer. Réponse. Regarding working hours, in the morning we had to arrive at the work site to dig the earth when the sun rose. We took a short break at 11 and we resumed the work at 1 in the afternoon. We continued from working from 1 until 5 p.m. after which we had another short break. And after that other short break, what were the working hours after that? Answer. Concerning night shift, we started from uh, perhaps 6 p.m. There was no clock, no watch for us to watch to see the time. I think uh, it was we started night shift from uh, 6 until 10. At the time, the part of the uh, dam was uh, broken, so we à had to on an offensive to fix and repair the dam. In my area, uh, annually, during uh, September, the Flat situation was uh, high, the, the, and uh, we had to work hard to build a dam and try to uh, block the water from uh, breaking the dam. Sir, my, my last question. You've told us about food, uh, hard work, long hours, fear. Can you tell us what was the most difficult aspect of your time at the Trapping to Maud Dam work site? What was the hardest for you from a physical and emotional perspective? Answer. Mentally and physically, the work was hard for me because I had to carry dirt in extremely huge work quota. My bag was almost banned uh, because of uh, the hard work. So in terms of uh, men mentally and uh, physically uh, situation, it was very hard. Thank you for answering my questions, Mr. Civil Party. Thank you, Mr. President. No further questions. Le 
President, thank you. Merci. The floor is now given to the defense team for the accused. You may first start uh, counsel for Mr. Nguyenji. You can now put questions to this civil party. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Civil Party. I have a few questions um, that I would like to put to you. Um, you just answered a question from the prosecution that you, uh, while at the dam, never saw anybody being beaten. Did you ever um, watch anybody being killed while working at the dam? But at the réponse. No, I no. did not. Question. Did you ever see somebody get hurt or wounded vu... because he or she was involved in an accident? Quelqu'un être blessé dans le cadre d'un accident? But next. Réponse. No, I did not. No. Question. Did you ever? See anybody get arrested um, while you were working at the dam? Alors que vous travaillez sur le barrage. But no, no I did not. No. Did you ever get um, disciplined by your unit chief? Votre chef d'unité a-t-il imposé des sanctions physically? contre vous? Vous a-t-il battu? No. no. Did you ever fall sick uh, while working at the dam? Alors que vous travaillez sur le chantier. Réponse. Answer yes. Oui. Question. What happened? Oui, vous nous How did you get sick? What did you Comment have? Vous tombez malade. Quelle était votre maladie? Mat Réponse. Answer. I had a uh, high temperature and uh, fever. fever. And Question. when you felt these symptoms, what did you do? Did you ask quand vous avez um, leave to symptoms. stop working and, and, and lie down? De pour vous reposer? Answer. When I, whenever I felt sick, I told my uh, unit chief Quand je he malade, would je allow me, me to rest. Et il me de me Did any of your workers in any of your any of the workers in your unit um, get sick? Subsequently, stay sick and then had to go to the hospital to recover. But my name is Answer. Réponse. No, I did not witness uh, such incident. Have you ever heard whether workers who got sick and who didn't recover um, could ask to be put on an ox cart to go to the district hospital to get better. Answer. No, I did not. No. Question. Have you ever Question. see somebody um, die not because he was he or she was killed but because of exhaustion? At the work site? mourir, non pas d'exécution, mais d'épuisement sur le chantier. But when they couldn't. Réponse. No, I did not. No. Um, just, just now you were asked a question Question. by the prosecution about um, juste de vous a saying or a proverb to keep you is no gain, to lose you is no loss. 
you said um, that you had heard this and that your unit chief had said this a few times. Can you explain why it was that he said this, but at the same time allowed you on a few occasions to lie down when you were sick and get better? de vous reposer quand vous tombiez malade. Answer. Réponse. It was because I uh, was a regular at work. Whatever work I was assigned to do, I always did it. So the chief would allow me to take rest when I fell sick once in a while. So maybe it wasn't clear to me, but to whom was your unit chief referring then when he was using this? Uh, saying, qui votre chef d'unité faisait-il référence no lorsqu'il disait à te garder en ligne, à t'éliminer, on ne perd rien À qui s'adressait-il Réponse. Answer. In the meetings, this slogan was announced so that everyone could hear. C'est le dicton était prononcé lors des réunions pour que tout le monde l'entende. I understand, but. Um, who did you think at the time did he have in mind when he was using this proverb? But when Réponse. answer, it was general. A speech or slogan for everyone in the meetings. So the slogan was referred to everyone in general. Cela faisait référence à tout le monde. But what, 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 did it, what did it mean to you at the Question. time when you heard it? What was your understanding? What he meant with it? But he said more. Answer the so called slogan or proverb was no to keep you is no gain, Ce to lose you is no loss. One who did not follow the guideline of Ankar would be taken away, killed, and killed. Uh, this is my understanding. Ce que compris. I see. Um, you just also spoke about working um, when it was dark between Vous 7, 6 or 7 and 10 p.m. Um, was night work occasional? Um, once in a while, when an offensive, offensive was needed, or uh, was it regularly? Answer. It was not uh, permanent uh, work for us to do. It, was, it happened only when the, we were told to be on an offensive. Lorsque nous étions sur l'offensive, lorsque l'on disait d'être sur l'offensive. Um, did um, the woman that you married and that you spoke about earlier um, work at the dam site as well? Madman, man. Answer no, she was not working at the dam site. What about any of her? Uh, relatives, any of her 13 relatives who, 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 whom you said they were killed, did any of them work at the, the dam work site?
but me and answer yes some of them réponse. worked at the oui, work certains site. Eux travaillaient sur le um, who were Rit and Un qui étaient Rit et Un uh, réponse answer Un was the district Un chief était le chef de district Red yeah. As for Red, uh, he was Reed the militia man at the district level. Était un militia attaché au district. Did Red and Spoon have any position um, Reed et at the dam worksite? Did they, sur le were they unit chiefs or were they in any commanding function? Answer. Réponse. I did not see them at that time. Je ne les ai pas vus à l'époque. Um, in your Question. civil party application, Dans votre de um, de parti civil. Mr. Civil Party D22 D22 1 slash 1934 uh, you hold both red and un responsible um, for the harm and for the crimes. Uh, Vous dites que what exactly are they responsible for? Qu'ils sont responsables, mais de quoi sont-ils responsables? But La cote est D22 bar 1934. When my Réponse family members and relatives had been arrested, Quand, euh, the two individuals had to be responsible for the arrest because uh, they were militia men and uh, unit chiefs. And, and I was told that uh, my family members and uh, relatives had been arrested under the responsibility of uh, the two individuals. Did the arrest of um, your wife and her family members have Question. anything to do with their work on the dam? L'arrestation de votre épouse et de sa famille avait-elle quelque chose à voir avec leurs travaux ou leur travail plutôt Up sur le chantier de, du barrage? Réponse. Answer. Uh, at the time, it was uh, when the rice uh, was almost harvested. À l'époque, le riz avait été presque entièrement moissonné. So, I'm not sure if I understand correctly, but does this mean, or are you implying that um, the arrest had nothing to do with some of them working at the dam? Rien à voir avec leurs travaux sur le chantier. Answer. Réponse. The arrests had nothing to do with uh, the work at the les arrestations dam work site. I told the court already they had been arrested when they were harvesting rice. And uh, I was told that uh, my wife and her et family members had been arrested and placed at the district hall. Um, in addition to uh, in addition to uh, Red and Un, you also um, hold en plus de Rit, uh, late King Father Norodom Sihanouk responsible for the crimes because, as you said, he created the Khmer Rouge. Um, what exactly do you mean with that? Answer. On this point, at that time, there was an appeal from the late king father to encourage children to go into the Marquis or Django, and after which there was Khmer Rouge.
Et après, il y a eu les Khmer Rouges. And uh, after the appeal, uh, we noticed that Khmer Rouge uh, took control of the country. après qu'il ait lancé son appel que les Khmer Rouges ont pris le contrôle du pays. And the late king father was one of the victims Et as well during the regime, although he made the appeal. Même si c'est lui qui avait lancé l'appel. Thank you, Mr. Civil Party. Thank you, Mr. President. Merci, M. le Président. Le Président, merci. Maintenant, le floor est donné à la défense de M. Kusapov. Merci, M. le Président. Bonjour, M. de la part civile. Je n'ai que de brèves questions à vous poser en ma qualité de conseil de M. Kusapov. Nous avons plusieurs documents à notre disposition qui sont des rapports hein, de euh, votre demande d'être de, euh, partie civile euh, euh, au procès. Et euh, je voulais savoir si euh, ce que vous avez indiqué lors de euh, votre entretien avec les personnes qui ont, vous, ont, vous ont aidé à remplir euh, le document, si vous avez indiqué, vous avez bien indiqué ce que vous nous avez dit aujourd'hui, à savoir que euh, le quota que vous aviez appliqué sur le barrage de euh, Trampanktma était de 3 mètres cubes par jour. Trampanktma, dans le travail, était de 3 mètres cubes par jour. Est-ce que c'est ce que vous avez dit Je vous remercie. Le Président. Please hold on, Mr. Civil Party Legal Lawyer. You may now proceed. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Une très courte clarification, car je ne suis pas certain que toutes les parties comprennent nécessairement comment le rapport de l'unité des victimes a été réalisé. En fait, c'est quelqu'un de l'unité des victimes qui fait la synthèse de l'information contenue dans la constitution de partie civile en Khmer, mais au moment de la réalisation de ce rapport, il n'y a aucune interaction entre la personne de l'unité des victimes et la partie civile. Donc c'est simplement un résumé qui est fait de la constitution de partie civile civil en Khmer, le document original étant la constitution de partie civile en Khmer et un employé de l'unité des victimes faisant un résumé en anglais. Je remercie ma pour cette précision. Dans le document E3-4-8-8-1, qui est donc le formulaire de renseignement qui a été rempli, euh, il y a euh, indiqué un certain nombre de choses sur le, euh, ce, que vous avez, euh, sur ce que vous avez indiqué euh, au moment de remplir euh, ce formulaire. Ma question est donc de savoir, donc, E3, 3, 4, 8, 8, 9, en français, 0, 0, 8, 9, 5, 2, 1, 1, et je pense qu'en Khmer, ça doit être le 0, 0, 5, 4, 0, 4, 5, 4, 6, et en anglais, 0, 1, 0, 6, 1, 2, 5, 1. Il est mentionné dans ce document euh, que vous auriez fait état d'un quota de 5 mètres cubes. Donc ma question est de savoir si c'est une erreur au sein de ce document ou si vous avez toujours indiqué ce que vous avez indiqué à l'audience, à savoir que le quota était de 3 mètres cubes. Je vous remercie de cette précision. Autre précision, vous avez indiqué à mon confrère que le décès des membres de votre famille n'avait aucun lien avec le barrage de Trampanktma. Est-ce que vous pouvez confirmer que c'est en 1979 So can you confirm that it is in 1979 that they learned of their deaths? That's to say, after the Vietnamese had arrived. But, Kaslap, the Kronkusakium, the death of my family members, 
le décès des membres de ma famille was known to me since the day they had been arrested m'a été connu du jour où ils ont However, été arrêtés it was my younger relative who told me after 1979 that my wife had been her throat had been slashed and killed and that he survived In fact, uh, that information was en learned fait, in late 1978 and not in 1979. Thank you for the clarification. I have no further questions, Mr. President. Ma, President, thank you. President, je vous remercie. Today, hearing has come to an adjournment, and the chamber will adjourn the proceedings now and resume tomorrow. That is third September 2015. And for tomorrow's proceedings, we will hear the key document debates in relation to those dams or work sites as scheduled. And it will be uh, proceeded first by the co-prosecutors and the lead co-lawyers for civil parties. And Mr. Yum Yui, the chamber is thankful for your time and your statement of harm and suffering that you claimed you suffered under the Democratic Community Regime at the Trapeant Modern Work Site, and you may be excused. And Mr. Nun Sarat, the TPO staff, the chamber is grateful of your support as well, and you also are excused. Court officer, please make an arrangement with Vesu for the civil party to return to his uh, residence or wherever he visits uh, to go to. Security personnel, you are instructed to take the two recuse back to the detention facility and have them return to attend the uh, proceedings tomorrow prior to 9 o'clock in the morning. The court is now adjourned.